Um, why is it? Okay, are we good to go? Yep. Lovely. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, uh, thank you for joining us at today's Amenities Committee meeting on the 7th of October. Uh, there may be a couple of councillors join us uh, in a second, just some uh, connectivity issues. Um, as usual, if you want to make a, a point or ask a question, then use the chat to indicate that you want to speak. Um, we have got quite a full agenda today. Um, my aim is to try and get it as close to two hours as possible. Um, so do bear that in mind when you're making contributions. Um, so we'll kick off, please, with any uh, declarations of any disclosable pecuniary interests, item 340. Uh, silence, I shall take as none. Um, no, wait a minute, I'm typing. You've got to give me time. Okay, sorry, Brenda. <laughs> well, I'll say it now, I'm here. Brenda, yeah, just the patient. Go on, what you got for us? Um, just to say that I am a, um, a trustee of the Charles Burrell uh, who's put in for a grant. Lovely, Charles Burrell Museum, yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, Brenda. Ros, um, I've just had a missed call from Mike Brindle. I assume he's having trouble getting in. I don't know if he's one of the ones you've been trying to send the link to. Um, I did invite him. Let me try that again. Um, that's I assume that's why he's ringing me to say he can't get in. Yeah. Okay, um, apologies for absence. Uh, so on the screen there, you can see we've got apologies from Councillor Jane James and uh, Mike, if he manages to get in, we'll leave early. He's got a Brooklyn meeting at three o'clock, I believe. Um, are there any other apologies to note, please? No, I'm just looking to see who else we're missing. Only one or two. Thank you. You're probably having to multitask, Ros, so apologies for that. Are, are, you, are you good to go? Yeah, I think so. No, cool, yeah. thank you. Um, so uh, minutes um, from our last meeting, uh, and they were presented for council on the 27th of September, um, not the 27th of October. Uh, are members happy with the minutes? Uh, Dave, please. Right, sorry, I was trouble finding my mute uh, button. Uh, yeah, there's just uh, one query. Um, I think I'm on the right minutes. So uh, under 270 stroke 20, uh, the correspondence, there was a um, an item about someone asking for permission for use of drone, and we talked about needing to put a drone policy in place. And I'm not sure whether any action is, has happened on that or the query. I have had a look at some policies, but the agenda was so full, Dave. I didn't dare okay. to one. But yes, it's it will be actioned. Okay, lovely. Thank you. That's my only query. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. We'll add that to the um, <coughs> uh, future action point so it doesn't get uh, lost. Uh, I don't see any other hands up, so I'll take it everybody's happy to agree the minutes. Agreed. Lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to item 343, three, uh, action points and updates. And Ros, as usual, has got a whole list of updates for us, Ros, so over to you. Um, just firstly on the Christmas lights, um, last year we delegated the responsibility, I think, to Councillor James and, um, um, oh, ja Janice, who, who's obviously not with us anymore, um, to have a look at Christmas lights options. They, they were after a white Christmas tree cone, um, and I've sent some options around to people in the ALP committee to let them know. But um, our supplier has come up for one that's very, very affordable, and, and Councillor James really, really likes it. Um, so it's three metres high. It, it's uh, as, is, as is in front of this stall. There's actually a, a, um, a pinnacle to it as well. There's a star that goes on top. So... Mm -hmm. um, we're proposing that we're, uh, uh, in, in our terms of our, our the money that we've put aside and our underspend, that we buy the cone light for the top of the guild hall. Um, we repair three of our lamppost snowflakes that have a damage. We buy two more artificial trees with sparkly lights to put on the shambles. And then the remaining funds we'll use to replace all the lights, uh, our icicles, because they're starting to fade. 
they have a shelf life and they're starting to get quite dim. So that's kind of what, what, what just to let you know, that's what we're going to do in terms of um, uh, Christmas lights this year. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, I can't see any hands up. That's all within budget and yeah. delegated to the sort of subgroup that worked on the Christmas lights, isn't it? So we're just noting that. Yeah, and we've got a crack on because obviously we, we're going... Christmas is coming. Christmas is coming. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah. Uh, just to say that we received five highly commended certificates for the Thetford Angle in Bloom entry. So well done to Sex, we Sex, Rock and Roll and Weeding. I just can't get the name right. <laughs> um, we, uh, they got one, the cemetery got one, uh, Mark and the Conservation Volunteers got one. Oh no, I've forgotten two of the other ones, but we, uh, oh, we had, um, yeah, so anyway, we had five commended. I'll put the other two in the minute so everyone can see who they are. Uh, we completed the temporary fix on the river pass. We've had to go back a couple of times. Mark will talk that about that later on. Um, and uh, we've had the contractor from Barnum Cross Common came back after verbally saying that there would be no additional costs, to uh, which we approved that he we would go ahead and do that. I've just gone back to him and said, look, we're not doing it unless you can come into budget. Um, and I'm waiting to hear from him. Um, and the consultation on... That Sorry, Roz, to interrupt. Is that, just so I'm clear and everyone else is clear, is that the car park improvement works on the middle car park? That's right. That's right. So I've said to them, unless you're doing it for the price that was pr did last year, we're not going to do it. So. Okay, I've got our hands up from Mike at the moment, please. Well, Thanks, Chair. And I, 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 well, I'll, I'll say what I was going to say, which is that I, I have walked past the... Um, the temporary fix on the river today and still working by which is meant there's a fair amount of water going over but it's under control so the 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 the, the, the break is is largely uh, the system is the break is largely fixed but there's a there's a some flow over it that seems to be working now after some difficulties uh, sorry I, I pressed aq before um rose said and mark's going to talk about it later so i've said it now i won't say it again <laughs> thank you mike cheers rose Great. Um, the consultation for nuns, bridges is all cleared. We haven't got many respondents for that, so we do still need some more. So if I circulate that again, if people could uh, circulate it through their networks. Um, the Guildhall Marketplace survey is open as well. We've currently got about just over 200 uh, responses to that. It would be good as we could get as many as possible. At the moment, it looks like 70% 70, 70 um, of those people who are responding are saying, we think we should close it as a car park or um, have more permanent stalls like they do at Norwich Market. So if you add those together, we're around 60, 70. Obviously, if we're going to do something that changes drastically how we use the marketplace, we want to have a big sample as possible. So if people could get sharing that. I've printed out a load of paper ones that we're going to distribute around. And if any councillors want to come and pick up some paper ones to deliver, then um, that would be great. Uh, Chair, I'm sorry to interrupt. That's okay. I, I've been thrown out six times now. I've missed most of the meetings. Every time I go to put in chat, it throws me out again, and I can't get the chat to do anything. And I'm getting extremely upset by not being able to 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 do anything. I don't know what's wrong with it, but something's wrong, and I can't seem to put chat, and I can't seem to stay connected. So. No. Okay, um, I think Jenny's well, having the same problem, so it must be something wrong with the ice. Yeah, Mr Chairman, I had this problem, and I've had, I've had this problem last week. Normally, when you go into chat, you are HQ, and then at the top of the page, it, it actually says to you, rejoin meeting. That is not coming up. So you have to, lick, lick, the only way you can get back into the meeting, because I had trouble with you the other day, if you remember. Yeah. The only way you get in is to get chucked out, and then you have to, Go back into your emails and join the meeting again. It, you know, so you're you're missing. I missed when you was going through the agenda. So I don't know whether it's the council tablet. Um, perhaps we need to go down and talk to Joe. I'm not sure. Okay, the gremlins in the system. Um, Dennis, to save you, um, uh, have well try and prevent you having issues. If you do want to speak, just try to sort of indicate that you you wish to speak verbally, and I'll, I'll call on you to speak at the right time. Okay. Thank you very much, Chair. 
Did you have a Did you have a comment on what's been raised so far? Or are you happy? I have heard it because I've been kicked out seven times since the meeting started. <laughs> So I haven't heard hardly any of it. Well, you can take my word that it was all really interesting. Um, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and uh, we'll try and make sure you, you, you don't get chucked off again. Um, I have got a hands up from Dave, though. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, just a query about the um, <clears throat> consultations and, and whereabouts they are uh, posted. I mean, um, I, I know you, um, Ros was just talking about hard copies but i assume they they are online um, i believe but i can't see any uh I, I had a look on the website and i couldn't see anything on the website at all about consultations so i just uh, would like to know where i can point people to uh, they've been on fa the facebook page so no i don't do facebook along oh. with a number of other people me either Okay, so, so we need to get them on the website as well. Yeah, it would be great if there was what, a, a button that said consultations or, I mean, I know there's an events and uh, I don't know if it would be good under events, but it'd be quite good if there was a section where we knew it was going to, what they were going to be. Okay, thank you. Thank cool. you, Dave. Are you happy to say that Ros is an actual yep, point? Yeah, will do. Thank you. Um... Happy with all of those action points, Ros, or is there anything else you wanted to mention? Nope. Oh, actually, there was one thing, actually. Um, we've been talking to St Peter's about the um, kind of uh, uh, the consultants, about how we go forward. Um, and obviously, with me going and being kind of leading on the project for some time, I'm keen that we um, bring the consultants together with councillors and to discuss where we are and to agree a specific way forward because we actually have to submit the historic uh, England funding bid by November which means I can submit it before we go um, so I, I was having it to talking about the consultants and looking at the amount of money and everything and, and time scales I'm thinking, we, I talked to Terry about possibly having a, a special out to discuss St Peter's, but because of the amount of money involved and timescales and stuff, I'm wondering if we could have a special full council um, to, to, to look at it and explore it. And that, that because it's so much money, I think it'd be really good for all the councillors to hear the presentation from the consultants before we make a final decision on what we're going to do. So I'd just like to propose that we maybe have a full uh, special um, council. Oh no, somebody else is being kicked out. Stuart Wright's been kicked out now as well. 10 times I've been kicked out. Okay. Um, it's, it's not good for a committee. If half of it get, keeps getting kicked out, how can we function? Uh, Joe? <laughs> Would we would we be better to shut down and reopen a new meeting with everybody in? I can vaguely hear Joe talking, but I can't hear what he's actually saying. I don't know if that's the same for everybody else. You see, I I don't know whether uh, it's to do with how we set up the meeting because Tina got a cancelled thing to her before the meeting started. Um, so I, I did then send out a re-invite to everybody to tell people that it was on. But I wonder if it's signal if people are getting kicked out. Have we got poor signal in Thetford at the moment? Um, Joe, I, I can't quite hear you. Are you able to type in the box and confirm? Uh, I think uh, Ros's suggestion of stopping it and sending out a new link and rebroadcasting is, is a good one would be my suggestion uh, i'm conscious i don't want to keep losing people dropping in and out oh i can hear you. yeah go on go ahead yeah. mr chairman mr yes, chairman Mike Brindle, can I just make a point? I think Joe might be onto something there. Is it is it one specific group of tablets that are having a problem? So, for example, I'm using a Breckland tablet. I'm not having the same problem. Uh, when I go on to chat to get back, I just click back on the left on the top left where there's a, a, a reverse arrow. So I wonder whether 
I wonder where it's running. Set of working. I think what I'll need to, what I think I need to do is just shut it down completely um, and then send out a new meeting invite, invite to everyone if that's okay. Yes, please. I think that'll be best because uh, I don't. There's at least two or three people that have got issues, and um, yeah. so if you do that and check your emails, folks, and then join straight back on, and then once we've got uh, a good number of people, we'll restart. Okay. You know, it's getting a bit boring. But my, mine's not saying rejoin meeting. Yeah, mine's the same. I'm having problems with the chat because I'm not chatting, but it's purely black. <laughs> That would be super. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Dennis, can you hear us okay now? Yes, thank you, Chair. I'm, I, I, Brilliant. This seems to be more like it usually is now, so maybe we've solved it. Thank you. 
Lovely. Well, we've got two. We've got Brenda, Chris, Jenny, Mike, Stuart. I think that's, is that all of us? Yeah, I think so. Um, and uh, Joe, Tom, and Roz. Are we missing anyone? We have to do that, Joe. Are we? Are you happy, Roz? Are we good to go? Yep. Oh, let me get me sharing up again. Sorry. <laughs> and Joe, do you need to do? Thanks for sorting out. Do you need to do anything to um, broadcast or whatever it is you have to do to? Oh, let oh. me invite them. <laughs> Oops, we forgot our names. He's only the vice chair. <laughs> I'll give it a go. I, I just went to do that. I when I press on chat, it takes me to somewhere that I have no, I've never seen before, and I can't do the chat at all. And I've just had to re go through to get back online uh, to get back to where I was originally. So I think we're having problems. I'll I'll do what the chair said and and uh, do a picture and put a wait if I need to. Lovely. Thank you, Dennis. Well, I, I, I am in chat. I've just sent you a message. Do you yep. see it? Yeah, right. I can see that, Brenda. Now, yeah. How do I get back? It used to say at the top, rejoin yeah. meeting. That's right, and it yeah. doesn't now. No. Well, there is, but I, 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 I might disappear, because that's what normally happens. Cam, uh, Terry, can I just say that I was in a meeting with about three other people and we were just sitting there waiting for things to happen and, and then a pop-up a pop came up saying I'd been invited to join a meeting and I clicked it and then I joined this other meeting. So I think there might be a couple of other people still in another meeting. Yeah, we I did a quick roll call um, on the chat, uh, Dave, and we suddenly realised that you were the only one not here. Um, well, I think David Brooks was in it as well and somebody else on the question. Okay. So I think I, I clicked on the link that I got from yeah, the, there was a couple of email and didn't things help. have got, got in a different meeting somehow. That's fine. Well, we've got a committee and we've got <laughs> and we're broadcasting and, and Joe's here. And if need be, Joe and Roz, if you need to direct David into the right place, then feel free to do so. And um, I am conscious if Carla um, and Roy are joining us late, they'll need this new link. So you might um want to ensure that they have it but um i am keen that we get going and we're all here so um uh with that in mind oh uh, okay cool all right well i'll, I'll crack on with the agenda and rod has got the um presentation on screen which hopefully you can all see uh, the next agenda item is 344 which is health and safety uh, over to you Roz. Um, I haven't brought anything for this meeting, this but it was in case any of the councillors wanted to raise anything. Okay, are there any other health and safety matters that councillors want to raise at this point? Other than technology is bad for our health? <laughs> nope. Mr. Mr. Chairman, sorry, did you say there was something on the screen? Because all I can see is you lot. All right, I can see the presentation and it says health and safety and then the other agenda item. No, and I can only see action points. I can only see you lot. Okay, that's fine. Well, uh, I will uh, talk you through what's on screen. It's, it's really just a reflection of the papers that you already have. Um, uh, so I'm very pleased I printed out my copy. <laughs> so, but we'll uh, I'll, we'll talk you through. There's nothing to know other than the agenda heading at the moment. Um, so 34520 is budget update to consider the current budget and to receive an update on expenditure. Um, for those of you that can see, uh, Ros has picked up onto the screen there the uh, budget so far, but this is just the papers, um, Brenda and Dennis, that was uh, emailed out to us. Are there any other comments to note, Ros, on uh, budget update? Um, no, just that we're uh, we're um, cracking along. There's no major overspends or anything to report on at the moment, um, and um, we have a problem with ID Birdie is the fact that they're not 
actually invoicing us at the moment and that's major vegetation contract. So Alan and I have been tracking and hassling them about that. Um, and uh, we're just on, on to spend our budget really. Uh, we agreed where we were going to put the underspend at our last meeting. So it's not really much to report and draw to people's attention. Okay, um, presumably the ID Verdi contract stipulates how frequently they can invoice and be paid, so they should yeah. be invoicing in accordance with the contract. We said monthly with um, a contract review meeting, but we can't, they've got a new system in place that they can't get to work, so. Okay, Johnny Good, well. <laughs> um, okay, fine, well, that's up to them, I suppose. Um, uh, Brenda, particularly, I, in this item, Ros circulated an update on a couple of bits that you asked for. Are you, are you happy with those? Yeah, I, I've got the screen now. I, I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I, I'm, think, I'm learning things as I go along. I'll just keep tapping things. <laughs> well, the, the town clerk is uh, encouraging people to comment on training. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I have, I have, uh, yeah, I have sent a, a couple of bits. Well, I think Teams has done an update or something. That's probably what's happened because it does seem to be a little bit weird, the layout. Uh, so I guess they've done an update and expect us all to just automatically know the way around these things. So. But anyway, um, no other comments I can see about budget. Um, the only thing I would note is that um, uh, I didn't want to have too big of a discussion uh, at this meeting about the budget for next year because obviously that's quite a big discussion in itself and we had a bigger agenda anyway. Um, so Ros and I spoke about maybe a specific budget related meeting um, uh, in due course. So it's just an update at the moment and then a wider chat. Um, uh, next financial year feels like a million miles away at the moment. So uh, seems a bit premature to be talking about that, but um, uh, we haven't forgotten that. Uh, okay, so I don't see anybody else indicating, so we'll move on to 346, which is Countryside Officers Report, and hopefully Mark Webster is with us. Or he could be in the other team's room, one of the two. Oh, I've not seen Mark. Let's get Mark in. He's probably in that other room Dave was in. <laughs> Should I give him a call? <laughs> Yes, please. Um, Dennis, can, Brenda can see on screen now. Dennis, can you see the report on the screen now, or is that still something other than? Ah, right. Hello. I'm I'm now in the same meeting as the rest of you, by the looks of it. Ah, uh, jolly good. Yeah, we can hear you, Mark. Yeah, but with just three of us for about the last ten minutes. Who was so, uh, Yes, right. So um, I'll crash on. Uh, so, uh, creeping marsh. Well, hopefully you're all aware. It's um. It's had some uh, really good publicity, uh, front page of, of several uh, local papers and such like. If, if anyone's actually got copies of the um, Very Free Press or the uh, Thetford and Brandon um, uh, or indeed the EDP article, um, I'd be very grateful to. I haven't actually seen uh, the sort of hard copy versions of those, so it'd be really, really nice if we could have a, a copy of those. Uh, um, that'd be super. There's a constant stream of, uh, sort of people looking looking at it. Uh, you, you often drive past there and you'll see people looking down. Um, we've had quite a lot of sort of renowned botanists come to visit it, so that's um, that's really super that uh, it's sort of um, everyone everyone's really just so pleased to see it. So um, uh, yeah, really happy with that. And we are uh, we've been there today actually thistle pulling, and uh, we will continue to sort of manage it by uh, sort of helping to keep some disturbed ground to uh, to try and maintain it for the long term. Um, the plane trees, um, I literally actually just had an email from the Thetford Society. Uh, uh, they want to do some um, uh, crown lifting on, on the plane trees. I'm sorry. Um, I just wondered, actually, is that something we've, we've, let, we've let them do before? Right, because normally we would say to people that, uh, you know, as the town council land, it should be our contractor that does it. But is, is that something that's sort of happened before, that the Thetford Society looks after their own trees? Does, Anyone sort of uh, shed any light Can on I that? comment, Terry? Yes, please, Stuart. Yeah, sorry, I've been chucked out at subsequent times now, so I'm missing half the meeting. But um, we did um, finance those trees there, uh, Mark, your information, and we took Bartram trees, um, helped us install them. Um, and they're the ones who I think are looking to give uh, the advice and what um, 
how they should be shaped. As I talked to Stuart Wilson during the week, the, I think the understanding was the guy from Bartram Trees was going to come out and look to shape one of the damaged trees with a view to giving it as an example of what we should be aspiring to for um, the rest of it. So I don't think they were going to do the whole of it. Um, I thought they were only going to do one, um, just as an example. They are tree specialists and that's where we purchased the trees from. So I think uh, it's best thing to have a word with uh, Stuart Wilson and Phil Waring, who are liaising with Bartram's uh, Mark, and then take that forward. But I don't think the the idea is yeah. to do okay. all. Yeah, I'll just make sure that, that we, we... Right. Well, if, if if people are happy with that as a sort of thing to do, I'll just make sure that we, we've got sight of, um, you know, the, the usual documents, risk assessment, public liability and stuff. And, um, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to to see what, uh, what can be done with that. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Just from my point of view, Mark, I think the key thing is as long as you have site and give permission, um, because obviously, you know, we are custodians of the land and wider conservation efforts. I don't mind particularly who does the work, as long as you're happy with it because you have the sort of holistic view of what's going on. Yeah, I mean, if, if I mean, if Stuart Wright is saying, that, you know, he's, he's aware of this, that they're a reputable company and the committee is happy for us to uh, to use them, um, I, you know, I see no reason not to uh, to, to use those services. Um, OK, should we have a look at the next slide, please? Um, so, yeah, uh, hopefully everyone's uh, seen the very popular water buffalo. They've been, they are probably, uh, it's about the last chance to see at the moment. Um, they've been a chunk. Down the, they pretty much made to the same job of the, of the little ones, so um, we'll probably be waving goodbye to them uh, until next year very soon. Uh, I've spent I have had to spend quite a lot of time sort of uh, retightening wires and things recently just to try and sort of stop them from getting uh, sort of uh, too close to the edge. But um, yeah, it's really worth it, I think, for them to and, and lots of people really enjoy seeing. So uh, that, that's been super. Um, there has been a bit of issues with the Riverside tree. We've had um, what I perhaps describe as some anatomical drawings um, on that, which has been uh, sort of cut. And um, we are looking also at, uh, there's some yew and willow that fall into the river um, near Nuns Bridges um, and our tree consultants now looked at those. So uh, when we do a review of that, we'll probably be doing uh, sort of um, works there to sort of open up the river there and to protect those trees. Um, next one, please. <laughs> oh, I think Ross is too, too multitasking at the moment, unfortunately. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so breach repairs was mentioned earlier. So um, yeah, it's been sort of kind of creatively rearranged a few times. I think people have made a small jacuzzi in there. But as Mike said earlier, it's still functional. It's, it's letting some flow through the breach channel. Um, but um, as I understand it, you know, the, the main channel is, is still moving nicely, uh, particularly with recent rain. Um, so uh, I think basically everyone hopefully is happy with that situation now. Uh, we did have a bit of an issue with that bridge that's there. Um, twice it was sort of smashed in, um, but uh, Roger's done a brilliant repair by reinforcing the bottom of it as well. So uh, that touch wood, if you pardon the expression, has now um, sort of stayed um, fine. Well, hopefully long that may that continue. Um, next one. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Brenda. Can you keep an eye on the corret? if people keep disappearing yeah of course well uh, yeah, you and i seem reasonably stable and chris harvey and dave so we've got four uh, even though i note we've lost a couple probably due to connectivity and mike's now got to go to another meeting but uh, i think the four of us are fairly solid so uh, uh, please don't go <laughs> uh, sorry mark carry on Okay, fingers crossed. I'll try and rattle through before we lose any more then, perhaps, shall we? Um, can we have the next slide, Ross? Uh, so Barn Cross, uh, the, the caravan has been <laughs> turned up at Nuns Bridges after we moved it on from Barn Cross, but it now seems to have gone completely, so that's fingers crossed that that uh, remains the same. Um, I don't know if you had the chance to see the little meadow, which is that little triangular bit where the old barn cross was, but it, it looked absolutely yeah. lovely. And again, the, the, the efforts the volunteers put into removing the... Uh, 
uh, been really super. Um, we have had one or two issues with sort of problems with sort of attacks on the, the livestock. Um, so I'm in process of sort of putting up more signs to remind dog owners about that uh, and to appeal to people if they do see an injury to, to contact us. Um, but again, touch wood for the last couple of weeks, it's been all quiet on that front. Um, the volunteers have also been very active. We've been digging out some south-facing slopes for lots of, um, you'll probably have seen lots of sort of solitary bees around at the moment, particularly. Uh, and important for them. And again, the fence has been sort of, uh, sort of a bit of an issue in places. We did have a couple of cows escape onto the BTO a couple of times, um, which uh, obviously we don't want uh, to sort of ruin our relationship with them. So we've been trying to get them back and they've, they've been moved on, as I, say, I think I said last time. Uh, but I'm, I'm constantly sort of keeping an eye on that as we go. Uh, next one. Um, so, yeah, not, not a great deal to say about Malcolm Common or Castle Park, but I am planting. We've got another at least 3,000 trees coming in this year, so we should be able to replace a lot of the ones we lost in that, in that really uh, very, very dry and hot spell and um, just in preparation for the uh, sort of uh, grazing at Castle Park, the fencing going in, I've been trying to keep an eye on any uh, ragwort there before that establishes itself there and, and sort of cutting down some of the goldenrod that's uh, rather invasive on the on the ramparts. Um, so Ramsey Close, um, uh, I haven't actually checked it since it's been it was looking pretty nice with the strawberries establishing itself. Wildflower Meadows has been really nice there, um, but uh, basically all our sort of meadows are, are now coming to end. And I did actually send out a little, uh, uh, a few slides on, on Wildflower Meadows because um, I, I know some people wanted a few facts and figures about, um, you know, their importance and what, what it is about Wildflower Meadows that's sort of um, interesting and what makes a good one, as it were, that sort of thing. Okay, next one. Not a great deal to say about either Dane Close or Pine Close at the moment, but uh, still on my sort of to-do list to to do uh, consultation to to do some improvements to Dane Close, particularly in the way of fruit trees, perhaps. Um, but we'll see what people want on there. Um, Fredericks Woods again, just keeping an eye on it. Really, that that shrubbery is, is still looking really nice. We have got a bit of an, a bit of an issue with sort of dumping of garden waste in the area. Um, so again, I may be looking to sort of add some more signs to the post there to try and sort of tackle that. Um, have given uh, this, this, I think I'll probably sort of discuss that with uh, uh, Councillor Hodgson later, but there is one sort of resident who wants to do some tree work and uh, we'll, we'll uh, sort of, that's, we've given the okay for it, but it's, it's not something that would be on our, um, uh, on our on our list of things to do, it doesn't sort of meet any sort of safety criteria or, or sort of causing damage to property as such. So um, let's see about that. But it's it's not a sort of one that we would normally look at doing ourselves. So, um, but it, it, it is the tree consultant. Don't think we should do it. Um, Main Street Woods, again, the meadow's now now been cut there. So I've heard you've got a, a sort of ride down that collects as it goes along, which is, so as I say, if you've seen the, the thing on Wildfire Meadows, it's really important that we rake up uh, all the cuttings, otherwise it just ends up with sort of nettles and brambles and things. So um, that's really nice. And uh, we also sort of uh, did a little bit of work in the woods there recently. Um, next one. And more. Um, well, we'll perhaps wait for the slide to change. Just to bear in mind, there is a separate thing um, about Barnum Cross that's coming up. I hope I haven't missed that while I was um, um, out, but um, as I say, hopefully we'll do, deal with that in due course. Um, so, yes, yeah, school plane, we did uh, again the wildflower meadows sort of been cut and raked up now. And um, there's an area where we're going to look to do a sort of a, a shrubbery a bit like the Fredericks Wood one, uh, where there's a bit of a gap in the um, sort of hedge border there. Um, we did do the, the St Peter's Churchyard, we cut and rake there as well, um, just to, to get that done. The contractors will be back next month to do the shrubbery, and I've asked them in, in lieu of doing the mowing to, to, to do, tackle the ivy on the wall there. 
Um, the sculpture trail, I haven't actually got much of an update on this at the moment since our last one, um, but that's now next on my to-do list to sort of contact the artists with the lists of um, uh, priorities that we've got. Um, and of um, David, that's to give on the uh, on the one of the artists they've got some some uh, ready-made ones that we might be able to to look at as well uh, be able to, might be able to find homes for uh, so uh, volunteer groups so uh, we are sort of um, still sort of we're not really pushing the numbers of the volunteer group but we are getting a few new faces which is really nice to see and um, we're just keeping the usual sort of uh, distance um, and, and and keeping going with that um, so uh, yeah, you know, it's it's starting up, moving um, a lot of scrub from um, Barn Cross Common, which I know we'll talk about with the contractor works uh, on a separate report there. Um, and I would mention the tree planting. So um, that's something actually that might be worth mentioning to any community groups that you know um, that uh, they can get involved in that. Obviously, it'll have to be sort of socially distanced and limited numbers, but. Um, I am very keen to involve any key community groups in tree planting, and that be sort of from November onwards. Uh, next one. Come on. So um, yes, there's, there's there's no sort of a particular. Um, as I say, unfortunately, all the heritage open days, one way or the other, they they got cancelled. But uh, or, or my my events, unfortunately, all fell by the wayside one reason or another. Um, but the the volunteer group keeps going, and we will sort of as I said, we'd be very active over the winter, particularly Barn and Cross. I think that's probably the last slide of that, is it? Uh, oh, should, oh, should we should we going straight on to the uh, the barn cross stuff? Are there any sort of pause there for a second, Mark? Because um, th there's so much in your report. Um, uh, if we just deal with uh, any queries arising from that first, um, and then we'll move on to the separate barn and cross uh, item. Um, do any committee members want to ask uh, any questions of Mark and his uh, conservation report uh, this month? Uh, I'm very grateful, Mark, as ever, for you doing it in, in good time, so we've able to have a, a good read of that. Um, just one quick question for me, and while everyone else is um, uh, checking to see if they want to ask anything. Um, last month, we spoke about the bridge repairs, and I managed to go and have a look and concur that Roger did a great job, and uh, uh, it looks much better now, the bridge that's there. Um, is it still the case that actually that's really a, a sort of temporary uh, repair and we need to be thinking about a better improvement well there's two bridges there really um uh and if so what's the process of getting some prices for that so when we have a discussion about money we know roughly what we're talking about um okay so we've got the, the two bridges there as you say the one by the breach channel um i mean it will be sort of uh, that's where the the fish pass is going in so um that that wouldn't be sort of really relevant to think about that for future years um but the one with the handrail um we have sort of patched it up and it, it doesn't look very patched up i mean it's still very functional um but i'm not sure it's going to get through i mean it'll be fine for this this winter but i don't think it's going to get through enough um, without you know significant repairs so um we we could i mean roger has has offered to sort of get the timber and, and sort of construct a bridge um that, that is a possibility but that'd be very heavy on his time of course um so we could you know look at getting the usual three quotes for for you know contractors to to move in and, and do that as as a as one job basically so um yeah i mean steer from the committee would be welcome if you want us to to, to go ahead and um look at that for next financial year basically yeah, I think if we, uh, if you could get some quotes in the first instance, and then if it's particularly expensive, we can we can do it in house. We might want to explore that. But um, if we look for the uh, inclusion in the next financial year budget, then uh, at least we've got the information when we set the budgets. So that'd be really useful. Um, Dave's noted how useful the reports are. Yep, uh, I'm not seeing anyone else indicating. So I just thank you for for that one, Mark. Could I just come in, Ned? Um... Terry? Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Brenda. Um, I, I think looking at the bridges long long term, we should have that as one of um, what we set down as his priorities. Yeah. And, th and then if we can get um, some quotes, we can then look at them and then that's ready for um, October, November budget. 
because yep. we've got to do them because you know they're they're sort of they 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 got worse and managed to get in down there quickly to sort them out. But I think we now need to say right how much is it going to cost to repair the uh, get new bridges put in. I yep. think we should have it as a priority. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, I, I half wondered, given how popular the water buffalo are, if we put a toll bridge in, perhaps we can make <laughs> some money to pay for it. But uh, uh, failing that, but yeah, no, I agree, Brenda. That's a good idea. Um, I don't see anyone else uh, indicating. Um, Ros, could I just have some advice? We've got two members of the committee who've le left, um, left because of technical issues, uh, Dennis and um, uh, Jenny. Uh, are you content that we are able to continue? I, I do feel, you know, uncomfortable that they're sort of, you know, been disenfranchised, but I'm not sure what options we have, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I, I've spoken to Jenny and um, Jenny said, look, no, just carry on. She said she wanted to make some points around the town warden. If we do go to the town warden and if that town warden is doing anything other than our land, that vote, if she feels that Breckland and County Council should be contributing if we were to go down that route. So Jenny wanted me to make that point. Okay. Um, Dennis was very upset about being di dis disenfranchised. Um, I, I don't know in terms of this situation because obviously it's, it's not specifically written in our standing orders. I think it's technical. Tom's look, looking at it and he's, he's been Googling and things and he's thinking it's something to do with the update. To Microsoft, um, Microsoft Teams. Yeah. Um, so, but Dennis wanted to make points around the small grants program. And I, I'm that. now. Oh, you're there, Dennis. Hurrah! <laughs> I, 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 I tried. To, I've done what you said and uh, done it, but I've missed 45 minutes of this meeting, and I, I'm very dissatisfied with this. But nothing we can do. Let's see if we can just carry on through and uh, and, and and see if if it works. Okay, good. Well, hopefully you'll, you'll be able to stick with us, Dennis. Um, uh, thanks for that, Ros, and um, we'll uh, note uh, Jenny's comments when we get to the uh, relevant agenda item. Um, so that concludes Mark's report, uh, monthly report, Countryside Officers' report. Um, do you want to move on, Mark, and update us in relation to Barnum Cross Common? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. So um, basically, um, I couldn't go round with him because I was sort of self isolating at the time. But uh, um, Jesse Timberlake from Natural England, who is a sort of responsible officer for uh, the site, um, had a look round. And, and again, thanks to Roger for sort of showing him the, the site and uh, so that he could see. Uh, on the business plan is. Um, so he. That, um, which, which are the priority areas for action. So we have um, this income from the high level stewardship scheme, which um, pays for uh, habitat management and improvements works on the site uh, in order to meet uh, targets that are set by that scheme. So uh, basically what we're required to do is significantly expand the areas of uh, the open uh, breck grassland, the, the sand and chalk uh, grassland that we have on the site. Um, and and gradually sort of cutting back on the invasive uh, scrub and trees, um, which um, let's, let's remember, if you look at the wartime picture of the site, it, there wasn't a tree on it. So um, the really rare um, botanical interest on the site is, is all in those open areas and, and the areas under the trees. Um, it's a very much a secondary woodland, and which means it doesn't have actually any of the sort of wooden wildflowers in it. It's, it's merely purely trees that have sort of uh, covering over uh, existing open grassland. So it's, uh, as I said, required under that agreement to get down towards a system where we got a very small kind of fringes of, of woodland and trees, so that we're not looking to, to remove them completely, um, but to gradually reduce those over time. Um, and we've got five years left of that program. So, um, uh, well, I was going to say that's nicely queued up, but, but basically, um, this is the, the proposals for uh, where, where we allocate those, those funds, uh, which, as I said, Jesse has now agreed with us the, uh, for as the sort of priority targets to spend that money and to do the works. So we are going to be employing uh, contractors. And basically what I've done is I've now uh, contacted all of the 
five uh, companies who put in bids for the tender for vegetation management across the all of the town council's land, which included a, a sort of options for uh, per hectare prices for um, the uh, work on Barn Cross Common. So to, to remove scrubs uh, with stump treatment to prevent regrowth and also to remove topsoil uh, and in some areas, which we'll come to in a minute, to actually turn over the soil so that it's basically disturbed ground, which a lot of the wildflowers um, depend on. So this is this is the southwest corner of the site that we're looking at at the moment. Uh, so um, you're looking at sort of Jesse's um, blue uh, um, wibbly outline there, and the red areas are where we, uh, he suggested that it would be okay to cross the horizon. So that would include uh, the wood chip from the branches and the uh, the topsoil, um, which is the stuff that's got all the high nutrients in it. So we need to basically, um, it would be sort of vastly disproportionate cost to remove them from the site. Um, so we're looking at basically some sacrificial areas that don't have any interesting uh, sort of botany or wildflowers or wildlife on them, uh, where we can uh, put all these high nutrient um, matter, basically. Um, a lot of the wood we're, we're expecting, the contractor would probably want uh, and they may even be able to sell the wood chip as well, um, depending on the market price at the time. But uh, a lot of the material would be removed because it's good if it's commercially viable, but there are still some disposal areas we need to do. So what I've basically said to the contractors is using those, uh, what Natural England have, have said we need to do, um, I've, I've set out basically very roughly a kind of schedule for year on year over the five years of remaining of the HLS scheme, uh, sort of which areas that we want to do. Because uh, they wanted basically to know which bits lit specific at. Um, so as I said, I'm trying to sort of keep a level playing field for everyone. And we've been basically, as I said, asking all of the five contractors who, who bid for the tender. And, and also um, another one who was recommended actually by, um, by Neil Featherstone originally, but and is a very reputable specialist in wildlife conservation tasks. Um, some, of the, some of the contractors doing the, um, uh, the, the sort of the uh, vegetation management tender, uh, and I'd include the one in one at ID Verdi in that, are more sort of garden focused. Uh, necessarily have that much experience in sort of larger scale conservation projects but we wanted to see to give them all the chance to quote for it so i've asked them if they are still happy basically to to use the figures that they put in uh for that tender some of them we know just aren't realistic i mean as i said i'm sure id really won't mind me saying that they you know the, the staff on the ground weren't actually involved in their quote so they uh, I'll, you know, I've, asked, I've given them the opportunity to look at it again, seeing the reality on the ground. And as I said, I've done the same for all those other uh, potential contractors, giving them a chance to actually uh, invite them to have a look. So um, the same is true on the other side there. Um, again, I've sort of set out a, a rough schedule of the areas we want to do. So you can see the sewage works on the top right of your picture there. Uh, so we're looking at an area of woodland right in the middle of the sort of eastern side of the site uh, with the river sort of down to the bottom. So again, similar sort of scenario, basically just taking a bit off each time. Uh, around the edges of the site, what I'm really looking to do is clear those areas where there's no undergrowth at all underneath it. So it's sort of pretty much a dead zone underneath the sort of scrub and trees. Uh, so we're leaving sort of areas around the edges where there's still some of the grass growing underneath. Um, and that means it has less of a landscape impact immediately and we concentrate on the priority areas for actually making improvements. So these areas will have as I said, scrub and tree removed and then topsoil removed uh, to get down to the sand and then that's that's ideal for colonising for the sort of um, next one. So this, the other part, of this, the other part of this, and this, so there's, there's sort of lots of different um, jobs here for contractors. There's the tree and scrub removal. There's the soil removal, and then there's also an area on the south east of the site, uh, sort of between the river and the road, right in that bottom corner, where we're looking to do either either a sort of cut runs over the harrow or rotivating to provide disturbed ground. As I said, a lot of the Breckland specialists really depend on, on the soil being churned over. 
been done by livestock and particularly rabbits um, but we, we just don't get the numbers of them that we used to to keep that sort of um, that, that disturbed ground habitat going um, so I think can we is there one more slide we've got uh, yeah so we've got um, so the, the contractors will be tackling the larger stuff for obvious reasons uh, mechanically uh, our volunteers will be looking to sort of carry on we did the southwest corner of the site where the vegetation stripes are last year so we're going to go in sort of the opposite corner this year to do each each corner of the site in on a four-year cycle roughly so that we by the time we get round again it sort of it may have grown up a bit again um we, it is to a certain extent a bit like painting the fourth bridge sort of when you're doing scrub removal because even with stump treatment some of it will come back of course so um we won't be sort of uh, laying the volunteers off anytime soon <laughs> right um as i said eventually we're looking to try and get down to about 10 percent of the site traveled by by the more invasive trees and scrub species uh, as we do the felling, we will be retaining some of the character trees, some of the more interesting ones, some of the larger ones, some of the different species like um, sort of wild cherry and alder buckthorn um, and some of the hawthorns. So it has sort of berries and uh, nectar for the for insects. And again, we're trying to get up, up in terms of more sort of bare and disturbed ground. Uh, OK, next one, I think. So um, yeah, basically uh, we're asking people to the, the committee to, to to note that the you know, natural England is now of areas as the priorities uh, where we should be doing it, and to um, basically, as I said, note that we will be looking at actually more than three quotes now, potentially. Um, if everyone actually does uh, come back to me, um, that um, they those those jobs. Uh, as I said, none of the individual jobs are going to exceed the 10,000 necessary for tendering. So um, we're looking to employ, you know, the best contractor or best and or cheapest contractor for each each of those tasks, basically. Uh, the total, uh, which is 13.4, as, as mentioned there. OK, um, over to you, Chair, for comments and... Uh... Lovely. Thank you, Mark. Um, so just to, to recap and summarise, um, those of us that have been on out for a while, this is basically a continuation of the clearance of uh, trees, essentially, uh, from Barnum Common. It's the sort of next phase of the tree clearance. Um, what I wasn't clear on is, because um, it spoke about a number of years, um, is the sum of money stated there, 13400 is that the total amount for the number of years, or is that an annual figure? That, that would be an annual figure. OK, so when we are talking about awarding the contract to somebody to do this work, we're actually talking about awarding a potentially bigger contract over two, three, four years. Um, I, I would be looking to award the contract for this winter uh, at this stage. OK. And, and it could, I was going to say, it could be a variety of different companies doing different bits of it. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that the issue is that basically we want um because the money's provided by natural england for this purpose this isn't the whole amount of the grant uh, it, it's just over twenty thousand in total but some of that money we use towards litter picking and mark's post and other things as well but this this allows us to do uh, that percentage of clearance works and we would be every year we'd be seeking to patch up being advised by Natural England, who would give us the money, they will say, you need to do this, this and this, and then we will get three quotes for each job to make sure that we're going through a proper process and it will be in patches. It's not like we're going to give one company £13,500 every year for five years. We're not doing that. Okay, that's fine. I just want to be really clear because yeah. um, I, I'm not... Uh, not clear on what we're being asked to vote on, which is why I'm asking. Um, essentially, what Mark's just said is we're agreeing to um, 13,400, which has been given to us by um, Natural England for this winter only, and it could be a multitude of jobs. Um, but we're basically uh, agreeing to allocate that money to, to, you know, to do that list. I was pushing for agreeing the 13,400 for the next five years to the end of the agreement but then maybe what we need to do is every year we need to bring 
the areas that we're going to do so that councillors can sign off the actual works um, and then because I think we get the best money, we get the best value for money if, if if the officers can get quotes for the different three quotes for each job as bespoke things rather than going to one to do the lot. Okay, but what we're being asked for, is, you know, we need to be really clear about what we're being asked for at the moment. I'm all for having a five-year programme and allocating 13400 a year for each of the five years. And mm -hmm. I want to be clear on what the specification is and what we're asking companies to deliver. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm just not very clear on what we're being asked at this point. Well, this year we're asking to flip back. This year we're asking to say this is the work that we're, we're, we'll be asking to do. Uh, they're, they're by date, aren't they? Mark, do you want to say a little bit about what, what you're planning this year? Yeah, so, so basically, um, it, it only really makes sense as a five year program, um, which is why we're sort of setting it all out now um, in order to meet our obligations as, as agreed, as I say, as, as the high level stewardship agreement and uh, and those areas are ones that Jessica has basically sent to us and said these are the ones I, these are the areas I want you to uh, to start tackling in order to fulfill those obligations under the agreement um, so basically the year on the year on year uh, the years that you can see marked on there or in this case what you're looking at now the ground disturbance or in the previous two slides um, are basically during discussions with a bit more clarity basically on which bits of those sort of those areas which we want to do over the five years would be the ones to do in the first year and the second year and so on um, we are asking as I said for, for year by year job by job quotes um, as, as Ross said because we think that's going to give us better value so I suppose what we're I suppose what we're asking the committee to agree to is is the five-year plan and the use of that budget for the five-year plan but specifically for this year's work as um as as you know for the for the quote process i suppose for this year um i'm not sure if i'm expressing the right does that answer your question or is that, what, what, do you, what is it that you sort of needed to clarify um, well, if I mean, um, by all means, if other committee members have a view, do jump in. Um, I think what we're being asked for is to agree, well, what I would be like, I'd be happy to agree to, uh, to allocate 13,400 uh, for the next year's worth of works um, and for you to get quotes identifying basically what you can achieve for that money um, and for us to do that. But I would much rather see a programme of works um, over the remaining four years um, and you know, put out to tender, and you know, so we can get value for money, and it's done to an agreed specification. Um, I'm not clear on what we're asking contractors to do for us, um, so I'd imagine the contractors won't be clear either. Um, well, then I have I have got a document mm -hmm. which sort of sets out specifically what we're asking for in terms of like depth of soil removed and, and um, you know, sort of hectareage of. Uh, that is involved in each parcel of land. So that's what I've given the contractors give, to give them enough detail to be up quote for the works. And, and you're quite right in saying that what I'm looking to do is rather than um, say this is this is the areas we want to do, how much is it going to cost us? Um, what I'm, I'm trying to do is use our, the budget that we do have available and see how much as possible we can get done for that uh, in order to make sure that as much progress as possible to, towards meeting our obligations. Um, so there is, there is, as I said, there is a document which I can send out to members, which which sets out in slightly more detail uh, exactly what is expected from the contractors in terms of, you know, as I said, harrowing, rotivating, soil removal, um, and tree and scrub removal. Um, but that basically, I mean, it, it doesn't give you, it doesn't really say much more than I've already uh, sort of set out in this. Um, a document here in terms of the area and, and what we want done so it, it does give they are sort of in a position to give me quotes um, and um, as I said what well those who have, who have already toured the site with me which is uh, three of the contractors now 
um, are, are sort of happy they've got enough information to to sort of give the quotes or and um, what we basically ask for is a per hectareage rate for each for each job um, so that we can see how much we can achieve. Okay, so uh, what you need from the committee is us to agree to the 13400 and to delegate to you to get best value for money against the conservation objectives for the next year. Um, that that <laughs> sounds, sounds ideal, yeah, absolutely. Um, can I just say, it was a wee bit more than that as well. The reason why this got put on the agenda is that Alan and I had a conversation about the external funding. Because the external funding is given to us for a specific purpose, by Natural England to do this work, uh, we, we just felt that it should be a resolution that earmarked that money. Um, it, so just for, it's for tidiness to say, right, this amount of money needs to be earmarked to, in order that we deliver the, the Natural England contract. So uh, it, how we do that each year, I'm sure Mark can come back and explain what it is and, and it's about earmarking within the budget at 3900 which is external funding that we have to, to, to do the scrub clearance and the scrapes and things okay I, I i note that ros but i think if you're asking something of the committee we need to be clear on what we're being asked mm -hmm. uh, you know ultimately we are responsible um potentially we're talking a five years worth of nearly 14 grand and I'm not clear on what we're being asked. So, you know, I don't mind agreeing to things as long as we're, you know, clear. Um, Dave, I've got a hands up from you. You're still muted, Dave. Yeah, it's just that I've, I've got a wireless mouse and I have to click it a couple of times to get it live and then I have to find the button. So it always takes me a long time. Incompetence, Un unforgivable. Um, anyway, just to say that the thirteen eight four has been mentioned a few times, and, and the, the report actually says thirteen eight. Yeah, sorry, you're quite correct. Originally, it was thirteen eight that. Uh, so we uh, actually uh, asked uh, to be made its way in there. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just a little bit confused about the um, with. I think it said something about the money being allocated, but we're asking we're asking for permission to spend this money, not just allocate, because I think it's already allocated in the budget, isn't it? Well, but it's not. It's not allocated in the budget. Okay. That's, that's the issue for us. We've got an open space budget that yeah. some of it is external funding, which is given yeah. to us specifically to do this work. And therefore, we just we wanted for tidiness to tell councillors we just need to agree to to put this money aside. Yeah, and the other the other question I have is um, because of our financial regs, um, we we have to go out for tenders over a certain amount, don't we? And um, if we're saying thirteen eight, I think that's above that amount, isn't it? And I. And I, I, I'm just wondering whether the auditors might pick up something because we have to be careful about sort of dividing things up into chunks to avoid it going over a uh, certain amount. So I just want to be sure that we are within our regs. I'm not, not particularly sure that what I'm saying is right, but uh, it's just a query that's in my mind. You're, you're definitely on the right lines, Dave. Um, but basically, this is like saying, um, in terms of the Christmas lights, we've, we've got £18,500 allocated for Christmas lights. Obviously, you'd have to do a tender for the main part of it, but it's about al making sure that we allocate um, the external funding and we don't forget. And it was just about making sure that we had a, a, a minute within the, somewhere in our minutes that that higher level stewardship money needs to be allocated to this work. So when we come to allocate, oops, sorry, try not to use the word allocate. Um, when we come to uh, actually getting contractors to do the work, we'll, we'll be coming back to committee to uh, also. Well, well, no, because it's not a tender for £13,500 worth of work in one lump. Um, it, it's actually negotiating and getting prices from different could you get better value for money in that way 
I will. Yeah, I, I can come in on that. I, from, the, from the figures we've got so far, it's quite interesting that, that a contractor who's, who's been on the scrub removal has, has been you know, much more expensive on the harrowing, say, for example. It's quite okay. notable. When you, and, you, and you can see that from the tender documents on the uh, vegetation management, yeah. if you look back, that, that actually the same contractors for, the, for those different jobs are, are actually wildly different in price. And okay. you know, it's, it, it does, I think, make sense to, to, to treat them very much, which, which they are, as, as completely different jobs. Yeah, that that clarifies it. I mean, if we were if we were saying, um, can you do all the work in a particular area and dividing up in that way, then I think that would be like trying to avoid the uh, the um, regulations. But in the way you in the way you are saying it, we are actually saying, give us a price for this specific work in that area, and then somebody else might give a better price for that for a different type of work in that area. I can see. I can see the logic of that, and uh, yeah. Okay, as long as we're within the financial regs, that's fine. Yeah, I think that's a, a good a good point, Dave. Um, I'll, I'll move on to a proposal in a second, Mark, but just one more quick question. Um, what uh, You sort of touched upon what happens to the wood, which they... Uh, um, can we just be clear on that? Do, they, do the contractors get to keep the wood, or do we keep the wood? Uh, yeah, so the way we've, we've set this out is that, that we've asked um, contractors to include, uh, you know, the benefits they would accrue from sale of, of uh, that could include the timber and the wood chip uh, in their pricing, basically, so that we're looking to, um, to get in terms of so the, the areas to be cleared um, by uh, allowing the contractors to sort of get the best value that they can for the arisings. Um, so yeah, basically we're looking to, in effect, sell the wood to them as part of the, the deal, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes sense. It basically reduces the cost of the job if they get something from it. Uh, well, it's I have a question, Mr Chairman, when you've got sure. time. Go um, right, I'm trying to get this clear in my head. So you'll have to work with me. That's okay. Basically, what we're saying is from historic England or whatever, we get 13,400 per year. Yeah. We need to ring fence that so it can't be spent anywhere else except for what it's been allocated for. Yeah. You know, yeah, finance can do that. That's no problem. Within that 13,400 or um, 800, we could have different, uh, different contractors working. <laughs> on different schemes as long as they've met the criteria of what we've set down but that will happen every year is that correct yeah that sounds right yeah right. that's that yeah, sounds that's, right to me that's straight in my mind now no, no i mean that, that's stop. perfect brenda the only change i would make is um uh, i personally would be happy at the moment agreeing to this for a year um and reviewing it and then discussing what we want to do with next steps. I, I don't want us to set this in stone for five years. Um, uh, I'd much rather we give it a go and then review it. Yeah, I, I, I can agree with that. Cool. Does anyone else want to speak on this before we try and wrap it up with a uh, agreement? No, okay, so if I can try and get you a proposal, uh, Mark, that covers what you need, but in short, we're saying that we agree to the allocation of 13,400 um, in the budget to enable works to take place on Barnum Cross Common uh, as prescribed by Natural England, um, and we delegate the uh, coordination of the work and the obtaining of quotes to you as the officer. Uh, and that will be Thank the, you, for the next 12 months worth of work and then we'll have a review does that does that give you what you need to crack on and then um, yeah we'll absolutely that, that's that's super we can we can as you say crack on with that just the sooner we we get that out um the better can we have a vote on that one lovely is there a, if I'm, I'm happy to this, is there a seconder for that please i'll, I'll second it. it uh got a tussle between Brenda and uh, Dennis take, there. Take, take, take Let, take <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I assume, Dennis, if you're happy to second, you're in fa favour of that? I am in favour, thank you. Kurt. Cool. And Chris has put agree in the chat. Dave, are you happy with that? Yeah, I'm agreeing. I'm agreeing. Lovely. Thank you very much. I think that's uh, all of us. Um, 
Carla, are you with us or did you just, uh, am I just seeing in the, uh, Carla's commented in the chat box that she sends her apologies for today. So just so we note them in the minutes. Lovely, thank you for that, Mark. We got there in the end. I just wanted to be clear on what we're uh, agreeing to. Okay, uh, move on to 348 Street Furniture. Um, do you want to do the bins first, Ros? Um, yes, okay. Um, I can do that. So if I, am I skipping on to bins? Right. So at the time council, uh, we, uh, back in 2016, said we wanted all of our bins in the town centre to be heritage bins on our land. And so we've been busy uh, replacing them bit by bit. We did the marketplace, uh, we did nuns bridges, we're moving around. Um, Terry was very good at chasing Breckland about their bins along the sculpture, sculpture trail um, because the bit, it's, it's a hailing path, hailing way, hail, hailing way. Is that how you say it? Hailing? Yeah, hailing <laughs> way. Hailing uh, way. And uh, Breckland agreed that they would replace those bins because they were in a terrible, so sorry state. Um, however, they would replace them with the standard Glasgow plastic bins. Um, and um, we had a conversation with them and said, look, guys, could you put in the metal ones um, and possibly we could pay the difference? Or would you pay us to uh, put in metal ones? Anyway, they've come back um, and said that they will give us £540 towards the replacement of bins, but on the condition that we... If, if we replace them with metal, they become our responsibility, um, which is why we kind of put, then put this on the, uh, on, on the agenda. I think um, because it's their land, um, I think we could say, well, yes, we would take responsibility for them, but, but that doesn't mean that we would forever be responsible for providing a metal bin on that land, because we could just, it could be, if they get damaged, it could be our responsibility, we could remove them, and then it would become Brexland's responsibility to put a plastic one back. So I just wanted to clarify that then. Yeah, I think that's a really good suggestion. We're sort of future-proofing it. We're not um, sort of required to ensure there's a bin there forever. Um, but uh, let's give it, you know, my own view would be let's give it a go. It's such a well-used area. I'd much rather see the heritage bins than that, that they're proposing to put the very, very cheap and nasty ones along there, which have already been burnt out. Um, if they're contributing towards it, we're basically paying the difference. Um, so I think that's reasonable, but uh, it's up to the committee. Uh, Dennis, are you waving at me? Yes, I am, Chair. Thank you very much. That's okay. um, I, where it says that we, we take responsibility for the bins, does that mean we take responsibility for emptying them? No. I mean, you, we must make that clear that we're not taking responsibility for emptying them at this yeah. time. No, they're not expecting us to do that. No, okay, so thank you. Uh, everybody else generally happy with the recommendation that's on the screen? Yes, Joe. Agreed. Thank you, Dennis. Den Dave's agreed. Brenda, are you happy? I'm happy. You're happy. Jolly good. Ros, do you need a proposal and a seconder for that? Um, I, I think, yeah, that's, let's do it. Let's do it. Just doesn't it. Lovely. <laughs> Dennis, do you want to propose that one, since you have missed out on the other one? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I propose that, yes. Thank you. And a seconder, please. Happy to second that, Dave. Lovely. Cool, and we've already all spoken in agreement to that. Thank you for that. I've been making a nice improvement to the sculpture in time for the sculpture trial, that I'll say. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's that one. And the second part of street furniture is about um, uh, notice boards. And I'll ask Stuart Wright to introduce this one just to give poor old Ross a bit of a <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Um, I think just to set the scene, I have made you aware of what, how I see the situation. In the past, where street furniture has been delivered uh, in where Moonthet, Ford, Breckland, or Norfolk, if it's been specifically requested for Thetford, we tend to have this legacy that we take on the assets going forward. Um, in some ways, it's good, and it's in, in our books. We have then free reign to do with them what we want, but obviously, it is a liability going forward. Uh, these three um, notice boards are actually they are wayfaring um, orientation panels which have yet to have the inserts um, put in. I know Ros has now done the, the stickers so that we can install those, were put in as part of the scheme of 
Breckland paid Norfolk to put some car park signs up and some finger posts and these um, wayfaring or intention panels. So they were put in at uh, Breckland's expense. Norfolk did the delivery and the legacy it was expected would come our way. So I think this is just a matter of formally recognising them on our asset register, um, which we then uh, make sure we can keep a, a handle on and uh, keep in good nick. But as I say, the in inserts have been prepared. They did have the Moving Thetford Ford logo on. That's why we need some stickers so that uh, we don't get the public saying, oh, MTF again. Um, <laughs> but that was the reason that they weren't put up initially. But I say Ross has now got those stickers done so that they can be installed and uh, look nice and spick and span. But so I think it's just formally adopting those notes of board to our asset register. Lovely. Thank you, Stuart. They look quite good quality by the looks of the photos. Are they cast iron or...? or you know, These quite... are the ones that we, when we put the specification forward, we want to be consistent with the ones we have. And yes, they are cast iron um, header boards. Um, I think they're probably aluminium or steel poles, but they are metal um, framed. And give them the, their due, the ones around the town have been very vandal resistant and the, the, um, the material they use is pretty much indestructible. So I think, you know, it's, it's right that we carry on with the, with the good stuff that we've got because um, it has stood the test of time. Cool. And the, the logo that's on the top there that we can see, is that the town crest? That is the town crest, yeah. And let's just say similar to, well, it's exactly the same as the, all the rest of them. Okay. So it largely makes sense for us to take it them points, on. It points to us being the owners, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ros, the, the report there says um, uh, two of these boards. Is there three of them? I'm, I'm convinced. There, I've are, three, one there are three. There are three. Oh. Where's the third one, guys? So the Berry Road car park is the bus station, short-term car park, and the Pike Lane car park. Yeah. Uh, St Nicholas Street opposite Breckland House, there's one down there, isn't there? That's right, yes, just where this drop-off point is. That's and Stuart, fine. you did confirm that you'd asked whether there was any money going forward to look after them, and mm. there wasn't. Discussion. I, I emailed Tina to ask if we could get a commuted sum to look after them going forward, but I don't think that ever came to pass when Breckland handed over the money to Norfolk. Norfolk, I think, did have some contingency money within the, the quote that um, Breckland, they give to Breckland, but I suspect that um, got lost in Norfolk's coffers. But you, you could ask if um, some of that is still there. But whatever happens, I think the asset needs to come our way. Okay, cool. So what we're being asked is if we agree to take on these three and tidy them up and put them to good use, basically. Are you, uh, committee, generally happy with that? Agreed. Uh, just to put, um, can I say something, Dennis? Yeah, sure. Uh, we had a bit of feedback there, but um, I can hear you. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I agree that we can take them on. But I would like to see that that goes in as as uh, Stuart has said as one of our assets. So remember, so we remember that we've got to um, keep updating and painting them and things. Otherwise, we we lose it, and then someone says, "Oh, that 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 ball's looking really terrible because we haven't um, uh, you know kept updating it." Yeah. I think that's a really good point. Hopefully, and I think the, probably the, the weakest bit of them is, I assume that's Perspex or something on the front, but um, we need to make sure we put money aside to replace that if it's damaged and, you know, if it's spray painted or whatever. So uh, I think that's a fair point. Um, well, just I've got to on that, Terry, um, yeah. for me, the, the, when the insert goes in, it is uh, that Perspex gets removed and you have uh, the, um, the, form, the formal thing. So they're just temporary um, matters. Lovely. Okay. Well, yeah, it shouldn't be too expensive what we're saying, but um, uh, good. Um, uh, someone want to propose the recommendation that we see there? I'll propose it. Thank you, Brenda. I'll second it, Chris. And Chris Harvey seconded. Uh, all agreed with that one. Thank you very much for that. Let's, I quite like to look at these. I think it's a good, you know, good to put them to use. Very positive. You happy with that one, Ros? Yep, that's super cute. Uh, just to say as well that um, 
In terms of licenses, because they're on Breckland land, although they belong to us, I will check with Paul Durrant about that. But I, I, I believe totally what Stuart has said. But we'll just make sure that um, if there's any agreements that need to be in place um, around that too. Um, and yeah. also, um, if they are ours, if at a later date we ever did want to move them, I know Stuart doesn't want us to, but if they, if we did want to, we, I guess we could. Yeah, yeah, in theory. But yeah, no, that's great. If you do the sort of due diligence to make sure it's all done. That one at um, Pike Lane, I think, is probably the messiest. There's been like a poster stuck on the front of it. And um, uh, But if, if the perspex goes and that resolves that problem anyway, it doesn't even have to be clean. So no. that's good. Uh, 349, St Cuthbert's. So we've got some good news from St Cuthbert's Church, Ross. Yeah, no, they are very keen to take on kind of the, the management and control of the Sir area. So the guys put in the, the garden and of course um, we gave them a very small grant a few years ago for them to do their kitchen, which they have now put an industrial pipe kitchen in. I'm oh, sorry, guys. Um, they've now put an industrial pipe kitchen in there um, and, you know, with COVID, Obviously, um, having outdoor space becomes even more important. They've also had a lot of problems recently with drinkers around the back, and they were saying that having a defendable space for them would really help with some of that antisocial behaviour. So um, I, I suppose is to just get councillors' views about whether they're happy that we um, work with the church on developing this as a kind of a more protected space putting in maybe gates and stuff so it could be open during the day or and uh, closed at night um but um i was if there are any financial kind of things this could be a priority for uh 21 22 yes so whether this could be a project that we look at so it's approval to start looking exploring this forward and agreeing with it and then maybe looking to put it in our priorities for 21 22 Okay, thank you. Um, given uh, uh, your imminent departure, Ros, would this be something that Mark would potentially pick up with the conservation volunteers and sort of rewilding and stuff? Ooh. Or, or depending on uh, on who who you replace me with, whether you um, have a, sort of an Anglian Bloom coordinator who picks up all the horticultural stuff and kind of the town centre issues. So. But Mark has been very involved. Well, Mark came along to one of our Anglia and Bloom meetings before we got shut down. And that was the best meeting we've had. So, you know, I think Mark would be involved in Anglia and Bloom because rewilding is, is part of the kind of the whole thing, really. So, yeah. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> ah, yeah, really good. We're, give, we're giving you more work, Mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. But but yeah, I mean, it, 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 I'm I'm sure we can continue to be involved with that. Obviously, as you say, I may, may end up in stretched in a lot of different directions, but uh, we'll do our best to uh, to sort. Okay. Cool. Help out where we can, definitely. Thank you. D committee, do you have a a view on the recommendations? Sort or of generally happy with what's being proposed there? Um, yeah. yeah. Happy. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm happy because um, that area needs to be supported because yep. it makes it into like a little peace garden, which most of the churches have got around. You know, you can go to the other two churches that are in the town centre and, and they're gated. So you do feel that you are got that, that little bit more privacy and you are there just to drink the coffee and that, you know. So I think it will help the church. Thank you. Um, Ros, do I remember correctly, is this area included within the ID Verdi contract? Is there a saving for us not needing to pay them to maintain that area? Um, I, I, I can answer that bit. I it is mentioned in the ID Verdi contract, and I think it's a shrubbery clearance once a year. Um, I'm not sure there's anything more than that. Okay, cool. I just want to, didn't want to make sure we're sort of uh, duplicating anything. Okay, cool. Um, I assume, Ros, Ros, are you still with us or you? I've got muted. Yep, I'm here. No, that's fine. I, didn't want to, I wanted to make sure you weren't uh, dropped off. 
technology. But um, okay, I think there's general support from the committee for that. So does that give you what you need? Yes, definitely. Cool. Thank you. Uh, moving on to 350, Thomas Payne. Yeah, so we have been given £2,000 from the Thomas Payne Society. It's in our bank account now for the rebuilding of the Thomas Payne statue. It's in our priorities and stuff. I tried to get the uh, quotes. I wrote to four specialist guilders. Uh, three of them came back to me, but only two of them actually quoted. And we've got two esti one estimated. Uh, well, one's estimated. Um, Actually, one's estimated and one of them's a quote, actually. So the 9,200 is an estimate. Uh, company B is actually a quote. Sorry, that's my mistake. So uh, to, so we're proposing that we go ahead with company B uh, for the rebuilding of uh, Thomas Payne at a cost of 4875. And we have the money for this because we allocated it last month in our underspend on the open space budget. Lovely. And uh, I hope it's okay to say, but just to note, uh, very grateful to the um, Thomas Paine Society, who's already transferred their share of the money uh, contribution to this, which is quite a significant amount, I think. Mm. Oh, yes, yeah, on the screen there. Look, I haven't even, <laughs> didn't even read the slide, but it's not a secret. It's on the screen. Uh, but no, I think that's really generous of them. £2,000 is uh, almost half of the total cost, which is really encouraging. Um, uh, do any members have any uh, comments or questions about this? The recommendations there with the two quotes uh, to go with B. If I could just um, ask some questions, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, this is obviously the first part just for the gilding. Mm -hmm. And I suppose, do we have to then put in our priorities for the, um, uh, the, the cleaning of the, the uh, bottom part? Yep, that will be that be phase two. Um, we uh, sorry. And then the plinth. Yeah. I, I would like to see a very low fencing because there's no need to step in there to 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 read it if once it's cleaned up. If there was little low, you know, little low fencing, a couple of inches off the off the on the off from the plinth. Mhm. Mm um, I think what um Ros and I have sort of discussed informally, Brenda, is if we start now to get some prices for the for the other bits, uh, i.e. not the gilding, but the other bits, um, I would be very keen to get the whole job done together and not, you know, a big gap in between. Um, so uh, we'll probably uh, refer, refer back to the committee, uh, look at options, i.e. fences, or um, we've got to also be mindful of health and safety with that, but it's worth looking at the options. Yes, yeah, lovely. Thank you. Well, um, Ros, is there an indication from Company B of how quickly they can do this? Well, it's what, very weather dependent because it's got to be really, really dry. But um, last year we had a very, very dry November, December. Gav built a load of walls for us. So um, what, what what we were proposing is that we would we'd get everything, we'd place the order, we'd do it, and they would do it bit by bit. You know, so um, starting at the top and working his way down, really. And if it, if the weather's bad, you won't come. If it's good, you will. Okay, that's fair enough. That's a fair comment. Um, Stuart, I don't know if you want to comment on this, but I was talking to Ros recently about February being the anniversary of Thomas Paine's birth, I think. Um, and uh, my sort of aspiration would be for us to do this work and have some sort of event to mark that and the gilding being done, obviously all COVID dependent. But uh, do you think that might be a good idea or not? No, if we can get it done, it'd be fantastic um, to mark his birthday. Uh, depending which calendar you go with, it's either end of January or beginning of February, whether you're on the Gregorian calendar or not. But uh, obviously, if you get it done in November, that's not a problem. Um, I, sorry, I, I missed Brenda's comment because uh, I got chucked out again, but uh, I presume she was alluding to the fact we do need to tidy up the bottom bit of as well. Um, in the short term, if we can just clean up the, the stonework before we start the gilding, um, just to give it a little bit more of a fresh thing. I know the blue is the copper coming through from the bronze, um, so we won't get all that out, but I, th I think a, a clean-up of the plinth uh, would be quite nice before we gild. Um, and then we have got that bit of the plinth to repair at the bottom, whether we put fencing or whether we just repair the stonework. Um, I think we need to keep that um, on, the, on the front foot, really, to try and get that dealt with. Um, but yes, no, let's have a, uh, an event, COVID, 
related. <laughs> to well, I, I just say, think we're, we're, say we're up and running and uh, the normality continues. Because well, anything think that we can do that's positive at the moment, I think at least it will be outside. Yes, exactly. And and you know everything's so miserable at, at the moment. And you know something nice and positive uh, is uh, well overdue. I think so. Uh, uh, let's take the opportunities. Um, uh, I'm happy to propose that one, Ros. Is somebody happy to second Company B? I'll second it. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, everyone's in agreement with that. Uh, anything else on this one, Ros? No, that's fine. Just, just so I can, before we move on, we did, um, when Brenda was mooting this idea, we tried to get some crowdfunding going. Um, I spoke to Dave Ward uh, um, about the crowdfunding, and it's, the site's pretty dead. So what I was going to do is try and put uh, another crowdfunding site up and running because it might be sparking interest. Now we say we're doing the gilding, now we need some more money to do the plinth and then we might be getting a little more contributions that way. Good idea. Great idea. Good. Cool. Uh, oh, and actually, Stuart, if I'm not here, can you make sure we invite the Thomas Gain Society to anything that we have in February? Yep. Would that be, can I give that job to you? Okay. You can have a, a Thomas Paine themed birthday cake. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you for that, Ros. I know you've done a lot of work on that. I know you're very passionate about Thomas Paine, so uh, uh, you'll be pleased to get that one done, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, small grants, 351. The first part of this is to consider the grant request from the Charles Charles Museum, and we've been sent the paperwork about that, which is fairly self explanatory. Um, are there any questions from committee members about that application? No. Are there any other comments, Ros? Uh, we've all seen the paperwork, but are you generally happy that they've complied with our procedures and given you what you need? Yep. Cool. Uh, someone would like to propose that we agree to their grant request? Happy to do that. I propose. There you are. We've got Dave proposing and Dennis seconding. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the second part then is to consider future arrangements for the administration of the council's small grant scheme. Uh, I think all of us, apart from Stuart, were, at, were on the call on um, Monday about this. So uh, Ros, in super time, uh, Ros produced the options report for us. Thank you very much for that. Um, is there anything else, Ros, you wanted to add to that report since it's come out? No. Nope. Are there any questions from committee members on the options? Uh, have you seen this, Stuart? I'm conscious that I, I didn't. Um, I, I noticed it was sent out, but I haven't read it. So I, I saw I saw we having the discussion. Um, okay. but, but I still, you know, my little brief view is very much because it's such a small pot compared to the their, what they're dealing with. I'd sooner keep it in our house to uh, deal with. But I suspect we're going to have the full council discussion on this anyway yeah i mean I, I i'm not certain of the rules but i think it is quite a significant change so I, my own view was it should be a recommendation to full council whatever we agree to today anyway um particularly when there's not very many of us here um do committee members have a uh, view a contribution they want to make or do you want to go straight to agree in what option and, uh, uh, can i have a, a word yeah. quick word yeah, yeah um Thank you, Chair. Uh, considering like, that um, we had the um, uh, the report given to us on the Section 147 of the Local Governance Act, um, I, I I think we're under we we should opt to to remain the same and continue with the current system. Uh, myself, so um, that's just my opinion. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, that's fine. Um, uh, I know Stuart's point, but um, for me, I think the benefits were um, quite clear on Monday. I particularly like the fact that if a group were to apply um, for one of our grants, they could automatically then be also applying for other grants at the same time using that same application form. That you know, all of our applications are volunteers, so that gives them much more uh, chance to get other funding, which I was quite pleased about. Um, and I was also very pleased about their monitoring of grants. I think there's a formalised process for monitoring, um, which seemed to be an improvement on what we offer. 
um, but that's just my own uh, personal view. Um, Brenda, did you have a view on option one, two, three or four? Well, ignoring the options for a minute, yeah. my, my thoughts was, was I know that when you go, because of running, because of running community spirit, we can apply for them for a small grant. It might be 200, 300 pounds. They then put you in touch with other people that say, actually, you're doing this, but you, you know you can do this as well, and this will enhance you for the future. Yeah. And, and that is why I like it, because as the town council, we're just giving them the £300, and I'll give the child's goal. Oh. They're, not, they're not all that up on applying for grant. You have to push them, you know, where if they go to... Um, uh, uh, if they go to this place, apply for the 300, they say, well, do you know, as a museum, you should be applying for this, this and this. But we, you know, as the town council, we don't do that. That, yeah, that, that is exactly. my thought about them. Yeah, I, I think, um, I can't remember, that. the lady from Norfolk Community Foundation made that point on Monday, which I thought was really good, because um, she said some people apply for grants, and actually what they need is a solicitor's advice or um, an accountant's, you know, to sit on their board. Um, and because they have a network of professionals to support them, it's not always funding and bid writing, um, but actually you're, by, you know, you're engaging with that network of support. And I thought that was a really interesting point she made on Monday, um, which I hadn't even considered. So I think that sort of ties in with what you were just saying. Um, Dave, I've got hands up from you. Uh, yeah, I was um, I was looking just looking at option four because I think that gives us um, all the advantages of being involved with the community foundation and the things that you and Brenda have just mentioned, but also gives us the final approval. I know it seems like a lot of um, a lot of steps to go through, but I think it would only happen twice a year as well, as that was some something that. The lady from the Norfolk Communica um, Community Foundation was saying that it would be looked at twice a year. So it wouldn't be very often that we would be looking at these uh, applications. Um, the other thing I wondered, um, I, we, we are not necessarily in a great hurry to make a decision on this, I don't think. And as um, the, it's mainly the people who were at the meeting the other day, and there's quite a few people who aren't at this meeting, so I just wonder whether we uh, should defer it to the next meeting to allow other people to have some input on it and to think about it. Um, but that's just a, just a suggestion. Thank you. Uh, Dennis, were you waving at me? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. I had muted myself. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I, I too think it was a good idea that they, they could offer further advice and, and, and think. But there's nothing stopping them from doing so or us directing the, the, these organizations to the Norfolk Community Fund. Uh, that, that us giving our grants uh, for them to take over and control, and even option four isn't uh, really a good option because it, though it refers back to the committee, there would be have to be something absolutely dreadfully wrong for us to not to agree to, 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 to their suggestions. So we have, we will lose all control over what goes where. And plus 10% of the money is paid to the Norfolk Foundation. That's two grants. And that's two grants less than we will ever, will be able to give out at any time. And I, I'm, you know, I'm still concerned about that. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis, that's a fair point. Uh, Ros, please. Um, just to say that you're actually paying uh, probably more than that. When I did my figures, which was based on assessing each grant and the chase up that I do, the providing the, uh, the reports, um, providing you know all of that stuff, it, uh, it came up over six hundred pounds. So you actually are already paying that, but you're paying it in staff time, uh, and it's not expert staff time. Um, and I just want to point out that option two is just about them doing the administration. So basically, they would be doing the administration for the program. They'd be advertising it. They would be providing the report that the officer from Thetford normally does. 
and the recommendation, but you're having expert funding people to do that and you get the benefits of that one um, as well, because obviously, you, Terry said, they fill in one form and they would get access to our grant funding, but other funding pots as well. Yeah, thank you, Bros. That's a good point. It's so hard to not quantify what we spend on our own staff time on different things, but um, you know, you do an awful lot of chasing of um, application forms and, and stuff. And I was really interested the other day when uh, the, the monitoring side of it is built into that 10% uh, fee as well. And, and that yeah. on its own can be a pain in the backside if, you know, you haven't been sent um, reports and whatnot. So um, it's, the, it's the before and the after that they take care of. Um, so we've got a choice, guys. There's um, four of us uh, here today. I, I do understand what Dave is saying about deferring but i'm always keen to move forward if we get to full council when members want to defer it there we can do or we may arrive there and members are happy to accept the recommendation um but uh i'm in your hands what what do you want to do well i'm happy to vote on what the one i want but uh it's up to the rest of the committee also okay uh, Dave, you got your hands up? Yeah, I don't want to be accused of uh, flip-flopping, but I think uh, after I've heard what uh, Rosalind, uh, Rosa said, um, I, I think option two would probably be uh, a pretty good option because so uh, that takes the costs out of the staff time. Uh, we've got a defined amount. Um, just a, a quick comment on what Dennis said. We wouldn't be, uh, we wouldn't be giving out two grants less but we would be paying uh, the equivalent of two grants. I assume we would still have the full uh, allocation of 6,000 and the cost would be on top of that. Um, so uh, uh, we, but I, I agree that there is a cost to Norfolk Community Foundation, but we would save money on staff time and we would also, we would have the advantages of their uh, organisation and their expert handling. So, um, I could put that as a proposal and say I'd like to propose that we accept option two. Um, well, I think. Can I have a quick contact? Just one second, Dennis. Um, just on that, Dave, how I think we'll, it's best to do this is because there's four options, is I'll take votes for each option um, rather than proposing and, and second in each one, uh, just so I can get a, a, a steer from the committee. Um, Dennis, did you want to make a comment on that? Yeah, I did. Um, uh, uh, on the thing, I, I do think that I may be wrong, but I do think the payments would come out of our 6,000 grants because there is no other money allotted for paying uh, that money. So it'd have to come out of our 6,000 grant pot, I would have thought. Um, and the, the only reason I'm uh, uh, hesitant about two is that, again, it's them giving the ideas we are a local council and we need to be able to have input to allow people to come to us to get these grants. If they go to um, the Norfolk Community Foundation, we don't know if they're going to be passed on to us or anything. So I, I, I'm very hesitant about it. I am considering option two, but at this time, uh, I'll, you know, I'll wait until we vote. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Just on the, the money side, Dennis, um, Ros might want to correct me if I'm wrong here, but my view would be when we set the budget for next financial year, we would have to budget the £600 additional for out to pay for the administration of the grant fund, because my view would be the same as Dave's, that we have a grant fund pot of six grand, and that's uh, heavily reduced from what we have done in previous years, so I wouldn't want to reduce that any more. Um, but we would have to make sure we budget for the administration costs um, when we set the budget, um, because I think whatever we agree to do, if we did go with an external provider, it would be from the first of April onwards. So we'll we'll mop up the cost of that when we do the budget. Um, Thank you, Sarah. No, thank you. Uh, so we've heard from Dave and uh, Dennis roughly what, well, Dave said he prefers option two. Dennis is between one and two. Um, oh, Brent, I'll go for one right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Brenda, do you have a preferred option that you would like to go with? 
Well, I'm trying to look at the difference between option two and option four. Well, option four is basically this additional panel of experts um, would um, basically also review the applications and give their opinions, um, but amenities would still get the final say. So it's a sort of an, an, an added layer of uh, checking the applications. My own view would be that um, why wouldn't we want their opinions? Because all you're doing is putting those applications under um, those experts and making them aware of things that are happening in Fetford um, and, uh, you know, we'll take their opinions. But the, you know, the sort of decision making rests with, out with two or four. Well, that's, that's what I was thinking. There's not a lot of difference. No, I would really. got option four for the simple reason, these are the Fetford Shines Brighter people and they are about Fetford. They're not, you know, it's not a, a panel that's up in Norfolk. They are that 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 panel will be a Fetford panel. Yeah, I agree. Uh, who have we got? Chris Harvey. Number uh, option one. I've already said that. I'm not Thank you. Either. <laughs> I forgot you were there for a moment, Chris. You're so quiet. It's easy done, though. <laughs> um, Dave, are you passionate about option two rather than option four? I, I'm happy to support two or four. So I, I, I'll definitely be a flip flopper. I'll go back to four. <laughs> if I ask you again, you're three. <laughs> okay, so I'm hearing myself, Brenda, and Dave, uh, option four. Uh, Chris is definitely option one. Um, and Dennis, you weren't sure, but do you want to make your mind up of which one you prefer? Sorry, yeah, I, I'm I'm for one, option yep. one. Surely. Um, well, I'm uh, uh, happy to propose that we go for option four as a recommendation to full council, um, but we we make clear in the recommendation that it's to begin in the new financial year. The administration fees are in addition to the six grand grant fund, um, and we would have two rounds of grants each year um because more than that just becomes unmanageable um but basically that's option four with a couple of sort of clarifications uh brenda dave are you happy with my sort of additions to that wording yes yeah, that's fine. fine cool does one of you want to second that proposal i'm happy to second that cool um are you all clear on that one? Ros, do you, is that clear for you for the minutes? Yeah, that's lovely. I'm asking a bit today, I should think. So. Yeah, no, that's lovely. Okay, cool. So it's Brenda, myself and Dave for option four, and Chris and Dennis for option one. But it's a recommendation to Paul Council so we can have the discussion again um, uh, at the end of October. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> <sighs> I'm not anyhow, I'm going to take my jumper off soon. <sighs> the heating's come on. Right, 35220, Town Warden. Uh, do you want to comment on the information you've found out so far from Sudbury, Ros? Um, uh, just to say, um, personnel asked um, out to have a think about what they wanted to do about replacing me in terms of job role. And, um, and so that's partly why this is on. Um, and it was also partly on because Terry raised looking into the role of um, town wardens and, and whether that would be something of benefit to the town council. Um, I did get um, information from Bradley and Terry did note that um, Bradley was happy to come and do a Zoom call with us to talk about how the scheme works um, within the town. Um, so we could actually get them in and, and um, things. But at the moment, where are we at? Um, so looking in terms of like the structure of you and replacing me, um, Mark has basically taken on an awful lot of the work that I did around the open spaces and the, um, the trees and things. And um, through the structure of you, we've agreed that the finance officer is going to take on the leases and contract management. <laughs> 
funny laughing at the chat stuff. Um, so some of the things that stay in the, the scope of the amenities committee are sort of the reactive work that responding to concerns raised by the public. You get um, quite a lot of that. The management of the street furniture, the scape, the streetscape signage, memorials, notice boards, bins. Um, the Anglian Bloom, the development of the horticultural displays in the town in that pride. Uh, Kerry mentioned about uh, maybe reinstating the, the garden competition, which really sounds like a great idea because that's instilling that pride and getting everybody involved. Um, the, the toilets are kind of um, not under any very specific role. Um, and then the play park. So in terms of kind of covering the bit of work that, um, that I currently do, the areas within the scope of the immediate committee are, are kind of they're the core things that I think would need to be under that warden or um, amenities office or whatever you want to kind of move it and to take it forward so that's kind of at the moment where we're at and just interested in what councillors think and, and what they want to do in terms of taking things forward um thank you for that Rose uh Dave got your hand up uh yeah um Looking at the information from, uh, from the Sudbury scheme, it looks uh, very good to me. And um, uh, But one of the things I noticed was that um, the way it's organised, I think the, they've got a number of members of staff underneath the, uh, the head warden. Um, and some of the work that they're looking at is, is the sorts of work that's already covered by our, uh, some of our works team. So uh, I, I think it would <coughs> probably need a quite a big reorganisation in the way uh, our works team are working um, it, to incorporate that, that sort of structure. But I mean, it's something, I mean, we could take on the idea of it and have an organisational structure, structure that is completely different. For instance, we could just have one warden rather than a team of wardens, but um, I'm not quite sure the, the scope um, that we have in our thinking at the moment, but th those are my initial thoughts. Thank you, Dave. Um, uh, it's always unclear to me the sort of different roles of committees, but I'm uh, quite keen for us not to um, sort of merge into the role of personnel. Um, so I think at the moment we've, we're sort of in a difficult position because we're sort of in a sort of um, state of change, if you like. So. Uh, I wonder if the things that we could agree to do at the moment, um, I wonder if the committee would be happy to take on, uh, take up the invitation to have a uh, presentation via um, teams from the guys at Sudbury. They're, they've offered to talk to us about their role, um, which I think would be really useful. I mean, you can learn so much more listening to people and, and seeing it than uh, paper. So I think that would be really useful as a next step. Um, and just referring back to um, uh, Jenny's point earlier about um, town council not being the sole funder if it's a sort of wider issue, I wonder if the other thing we could agree to do is perhaps write to Breckland and ask to what extent they would be interested in supporting a community yeah. warden scheme in Fetford. Um, and, uh, you know, that could be two things that we could do to move this forward um, without stepping on the toes of personnel. How do people feel about that? Could I just come in there, Terry? Yep. I spoke to um, I have spoken to, jo to to Jane James, and she says that um, Brecken was looking at some sort of scheme where we could work together. So that would might be ideal for the town centre. So you know, if our warden was say um, litter picking and getting volunteers helping him, but it also his remit. It, it's knowing what the council want as the remit of a town warden, and I, I think that's, that's key. That we know what we want him to do, him or her to do, and then you say, right, you know, within your role, you will try to get people to help you do little picks, you know, uh, volunteers and that. But but we can't do anything until we actually know what that warden is. But I think talks with Norfolk County Council, you know, because obviously. Um, they ho own part of the town, and it basically we could we could work in partnerships and get some of that warden's money paid uh, wages paid for. Can you put it back in the kitchen, please. Yep. 
Um, thanks, Brenda. I mean, that's certainly what they do in Sudbury. They have a number of different funders. Um, I've got hands up from Dennis first, please. Th thank you, Terry. Um, yeah, Chair. Sorry, Chair. <laughs> um, yeah, I think what your suggestions are very good ones. I think we should move forward and try to do a cross, cross um, district, or, you know, across the whole uh, scope of uh, public bodies to help us. But yeah, go forward with that. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Harvey, please. Have you got your coffee now? Yes. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm back now. Thanks. It's all done. Uh, I mean, I've, you know, I've always been a keen supporter of having a warden or wardens. I'm not convinced that part of their role should be the horticultural displays and angler in bloom. I don't think that should be their job. I think they should be looking after the town and the town environs, checking on ASB, litter, bad parking, dog fouling, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not so sure that that should come under it, nor managing the toilets. That's completely, no, I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. the ward managing the toilets. That should come under our other thing. But I mean, I agree with doing the Sudbury visit. As I said before, I spent half a day with the chap in Bury St Edmunds when I was wandering about there and with his camera and things he did. It was really incredible to see. But he had specific roles. He didn't do number four. He didn't do number three. He just did, you know, the normal run the bill ASB for things that happened during the day in Bury St Edmunds. And he was much appreciated as well. Because the public was stopping and telling him there's this going on there, there's that going on there. And I think that's the way forward. OK. Um, uh, I didn't know there was a warden in Bury, so it might be an idea, Ros, if we ask for a copy of their job description as well. Um, is that Bury Council or Bury Business Improvement District that pays for that, Chris? Do you know? I have no idea. This chap was just wandering about with his camera and his uniform on, and, and I went and <laughs> accosted him while I was waiting for my car to be repaired. So uh, that, uh, there was there's nothing official. I just did it on the square in a moment. No, if I'm good. He said he was quite well lucky. done. Chris. He said he was quite lucky because he'd been introduced in February, so the COVID had just started to kick in, and they were sort of appeared as this had come on, because Preston Edmonds had been really quiet in the last three or four months, so I suppose people are now used to him being there. So he did have that advantage. But the one in Kings Lynn, for example, I mean, they have two or three, and they, they have a, a slightly different remit to what we're asking for here, don't they? Well, that, that's the point. They, uh, what we require uh, the warden to do, or wardens, uh, is up to us, you know, the, the, it's a blank piece of paper at the moment and there are different versions of uh, job descriptions that Ros has put, um, uh, it's, it's merely just the areas that fall under the amenities committee and we need to pick and choose if we go ahead with this, what that job description needs to be. So I think that's worthy of future discussions, but the more we get examples from elsewhere, I'm a big believer in not reinventing the wheel, let's see what works elsewhere um, uh, and then that could help inform us. So. Um, we've got two two ways forward there. One is to accept the offer, which is very generous, given his time to talk to us about it. And the second is to engage with Breckland. I take Brenda's point about Norfolk. Quite happy for us to to ask them, but you know, don't ask, you don't get. But I'll be surprised. Um, and that gives us a way forward. But uh, uh, Ros, I can see you've got your hands up. Uh, yeah. Um couple of things. First, we, it's after four o'clock, so we need to do the suspending standing orders thing. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, Committee, are you happy if we continue and suspend standing orders for the last few items? Agreed. Yes. Agreed. Um, and then the other bit was um, that job descriptions and stuff does kind of sit within the, the realms of the personnel committee. What we kind of wanted from a steer from um, the immunity committee, which is what Terry just said, is what do you what do you actually want to do? What 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 will? So do you feel you're not in a position to say, say that until we get a bit more information from? Yeah, I think so. I think I'd, I'd much rather wait and um, uh, uh, and then have a discussion about it uh, once we've had the presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because there's lots of different variations. It's uh, a town warden is a bit all encompassing, and we want to make sure they're not um, jack of all trades and master of none. But actually, you're able to make a difference in what we ask them to do. So, uh, mm -hmm. um, if we can all give it some thought between uh, over the next few weeks, but we'll schedule the virtual meeting as well and take it forward. Jenny asked a question as well, didn't she, in the chat? Do we? Where's Jenny's question? 
Uh, wasn't Jenny's about uh, asking others for funding, which is the Brecklin point, or is there something else I missed? I think she asked whether it would be town centre or state as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that, that comes into it as well. I mean, my own view would be we are Fetford Town Council, so we should cover Fetford, but we can uh, have that discussion when we talk about remit generally. Okay, um, and the second part of Town Warden was about the example of um, loaning litter pickers to uh, volunteers. I think it's long-term loan, um, but hopefully you would have all seen my email about that um, this morning. Uh, what do members feel about that? It's something we haven't done before as a Town Council, but clearly others are doing it elsewhere. Um, Terry, because I didn't specifically say um, about um, the money and stuff on the thing, I think we might have to defer that to the next um, meeting, the actual decision on it. Um, but if people, if you want to talk through what you're proposing, Terry, and then we can get it on the agenda for the next one. Yeah, sure. So what we're basically proposing is to allocate £500 to enable the purchase of litter picking kits, which I think includes gloves, litter pickers and high-vis jackets. Um, specifically to families uh, focused on children um, and they basically sign up to become a litter picking volunteer um, and get allocated with uh, this pack to support litter picking across the town in their own time um, so it would just be a case of us buying them and allocating the packs i've got dave first and then dennis please uh thank you chair um i, I think it's a, a great idea and i fully support the uh, idea of um encouraging uh, families to get involved in litter litter picking and providing them with equipment would be a great start so um, yes I, I'm fully supportive of that idea um, Tina did uh, send an email out about this today and uh, uh, saying that we uh, repeating just oh, saying what uh, Ros has just repeated that we aren't in a position to allocate money but uh, also that she was following up some leads about uh, getting some uh, free litter picking equipment from somewhere. So that would be great if that happened. Uh, but in principle, I support this. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Dennis, you're next. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, I, I'm greatly in. Uh, I think this is a really good idea. But can I suggest that if we're going to get those things, to buy the hoops that go with the bags so it's a lot easier to, to collect uh, the rubbish with them? You sound like a little picking expert there, Dennis. Well, I have my own kit now. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, well, I, uh, I don't see anyone else indicating, but I think there seems to be support for that, Ros. So if we stick it on the agenda for next time, um, by which time hopefully the town clerk can advise if we have got some free bits um, as well. But if we start to cost it up and see what we can get for 500 quid, um, uh, I know little picking prices vary. Uh, quite a bit, so we start having a look at that. Yeah, could I just come in there, Terry? Sure, Brenda. Um, I would also like to know where all the litter pickers are in the town at the moment, because I know the town council lend out litter pickers and stuff. Um, I know um, three residence groups that have their own, and um, I think Keystone have some that go out into the community. Quite a lot of the time that has gone out to villages. So, you know, what resources are already there? Uh, Breckland, Breckland have asked us not to lend out our little picking equipment at the moment because of COVID. Yeah, um, just to it. say, the Town Council have agreed to us giving litter pickers to individual groups before because um, it's extra what rock and roll we think. And um, the people who were looking out for the animals on Barnum Cross Common, uh, we have allocated, well, we've lent, lent them litter pickers to, so that they can do their jobs. Um, yeah, so we have done specific things in the past, but at the moment we're not lending out because of COVID. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think that deals with uh, that agenda item, so uh, thank you for that. And we'll move on to uh, 353, which is correspondence. Um, is there anything that I need to highlight? Oh, the, just the distressing incident at the bus station toilet. Um, I, um, yeah, it was somebody coming off the bus at the end of the day and the toilet's being shut and for them having a very nasty accident on the way home. And there was a plea that we could op extend the opening hours 
Um, I wrote and explained to them what our current situation with this COVID and I'd let the councillors know about this. Um, but while while the numbers are rising, um, I just think at the moment we're not in a position to um, change the hours at the moment. But just to make people aware of that and to say, yeah. Uh, I was just going to say on that one, Ros, um, am I correct in thinking the uh, tender for the toilet cleaning has gone out this week? Yes, it has. And in that, we've asked them to um, price flexibly for normal opening hours and COVID opening hours. Yeah, I think we all agree we would love for them to be open more than they are, um, but we just can't afford it at the moment. It's as simple as that. Um, but you know, hopefully once we've got the tenders back and the information, we can uh, you know have a, an improved service but um you know 10 till 4 is not ideal we appreciate that mm. uh, and we also had a pro pro proposal from athena about the possible future use of st peter's church um i did talk to them about where we are in terms of the building and the time scales uh, basically because we haven't agreed any of the works yet the earliest that the building would be usable would be spring summer 22 um, which is difficult for them. Um, they were really disappointed because they were quite keen to develop something. But I did say that we'd be very keen to involve them um, if we develop a meanwhile use strategy, and it could be that they could be a very key part partner during that that process. Um, but just to let people and they they seen a did volunteer to come and do a presentation and things. But because of the state of the building at the moment, I think. It might be better to invite them back in a year's time, maybe when we're, we've moved forward a bit. OK. Yeah. Does anyone have any comments on that particular one or, or any of the other pieces of correspondence? Uh, 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 a shorter list this month on correspondence for us. Yeah. <laughs> Terry, I'll just come in on the Athena one. I was the one who tried to um, get this coming forward. Um, what they are is a want to open the school um, for excluded pupils. Um, and obviously what they need is a, a, a building that they, they can you know, have sole use of because very much in school time you need the safeguarding uh, aspects. Um, there is potential there for them to do it, but they, because they wish to be up and running by Easter next year, it doesn't look so we'll be able to help them uh, in this respect. Um, and you know, it was going to be a stumbling block about the roof until that roof was repaired. Um, obviously, I think whatever happens, we do need to get the, the, the those works scheduled in, uh, whatever it means while use we are looking for. Yeah. No, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> uh, uh, Dave, please. Uh, yeah, just a, a slightly technical question, really. When we talk about the meanwhile use, I mean, um, Stuart might have answered that for me a little bit. I mean, are, are we talking that that won't happen until the roof is fixed? I think what we're looking at, um, if if we if we can defer this because I think we're going to have this special full council meeting on yeah. the yeah, uh, the idea is that we probably will put in a funding application quite quickly okay. um, and do the works alongside the, the developing the meanwhile usage of it. Right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Dave. Um, just on Athena, Ros, um, yeah. I know that they've applied to Breckland for some funding because they asked me to be a. Um, Sort of referee type thing as a Breckland councillor. Um, I know it's not much, but are they aware of our small grant scheme and have we encouraged them to apply? Yes, and they had a grant. Oh, did they? I think it was at the end of the last financial year. Or did they have one this year? I think we may have agreed one, Terry. <laughs> My brain is like a sieve. Uh, definitely. Oh, I, I think can't remember either, but. Um, yeah, they ran virtual school with children with autism. They, they haven't had a grant this during COVID yet. Okay, all right, I'll shut up then. <laughs> <laughs> Completely forgot about that. I couldn't remember, and I did all the paperwork. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Lovely. I don't see anyone else indicating on correspondence, so we'll move on to community engagement. Uh, nothing for me. No, um, I think it'd be a lovely press release about Thomas Paine and the Thomas Paine Society. Yeah. That the work's going ahead and the fact that they've given us £2,000 um, is a very newsworthy story, I should think. Yeah. Any other suggestions from committee members? Speak now. It's just the uh, consultations that on the website yeah. about earlier. That's we can. I think, no. I think also, um, if we want to introduce wardens, you know, just 
ask the public basically what it is they expect out of a warden might be a good idea you know is it to keep the town clean or is it to keep just the town centre clean you know a sort of like a, a questionnaire a briefing the only thing with that is you're raising expectation mm -hmm. um i think I until think... we know a bit until we know a bit more ourselves yep yeah, i agree and then i think we've got some quite meaty consultations on the go at the moment so um i think we Brenda's right, we should have a consultation at some point, um, but let's conclude the ones we've got and find out a bit more uh, information. Um, and then by all means, uh, you know, the public basically could be asked to help shape the job description of the warden, which I think is what Brenda's saying, really. Yeah. Cool. Um, 355 committee officers update. Nothing. Super. And 356 is to consider resolving that pursuant to the public body's admission to meetings Act 1960, that the press and public be excluded for any remaining items of business on the grounds that publicity would be prejudicial to the public interest by reason of the confidential nature of the business to be discussed. And the three remaining items are all to do with tenders and therefore they are commercially sensitive. Uh, are the committee content that we exclude the press and public by virtue of turning off the live stream. Agreed. Yep. Agreed. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you all for joining us. If you are joining us in the virtual world.